we're in this really weird period where we found that those reforms didn't really work the way we wanted them to. Um, teachers are incredibly demoralized. We, we don't, yes. not only do we not have the money to give them the raises that they have not had, and people say, oh, well, they had a 3% raise. Keep in mind, and a 3% raise. <laughs> Keep in mind that that 3% raise came with a 1.5 increase into their uh, retirement benefit. They had to pay out a, a, a 1.5 increase, so really, they only got a 1.5% raise. I mean, 3% is bad enough, they really only got 1.5%. <coughs> But not, yeah, right, just, right, that, that's just a CPI issue, right? So, so, not only do we not have the money to compensate them for what the work that they do, but now we've laid this teacher evaluation system on top of their shoulders. And you know, God bless the school, school districts, they, they've got to do it, they don't, have a, they don't have an option, they can't opt out. In fact, I think we might have tried to do that. But, <laughs> but this, system is really destroying, I mean, I truly feel, I have colleagues in Pewaukee, in Los Alamos, and I think it's destroying our, our teacher corps. I do. Teachers feel blamed. They feel like the work that they do, their effectiveness, is not valued. It's not acknowledged. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm hearing from parents now. Now I'm hearing from parents, not just teachers. I'm hearing from parents to say, how in the world did my kid's teacher get uh, minimally effective? This is what my kid's teacher does with my kid. Not to mention the other 25 kids in that class. So we're at an interesting crossroads. I'm very excited. I'm very excited for what lays ahead because what I think we should do is have a bipartisan discussion about what we want to impact. What do we want to impact? Not these piecemeal reforms, what do we want to impact? What do we want at the end? And I say what we want at the end is a kid who walks across any stage in New Mexico, gets a high school diploma, and is prepared, prepared, either to go into a career training or to go into college. Someone had a question. Have you heard any suggestions uh, regarding, that's always been the third rail of politics here, is uh, school consolidation, Administrative consolidation. Sure. As sure. well as higher ed. Sure. Constitution. Sure. Oh to man, believe me. To eliminate the They're always the talking about that. So we've got 22 higher ed institutions in the state. Um, and you know, everyone comes to New Mexico and says, oh, you know, in our state, we have one university system and they make all of the decisions for everyone. And we're like, well, that's fine and good for you. Um, we, we basically have, so UNMLA is a perfect example that serves a very unique population, that has a unique ability to take advantage of expertise that are right here in this town. Serves a lot of native students because they live close by or they work at the lab and they come here to go to school. So we have institutions that have unique missions and unique populations. We're working right now on funding them to the extent that they can fulfill those missions. We haven't gotten that completely right. Some people would like survival of the fittest. Some people say, we only need a handful of institutions, let's close the rest and save. I would more say, yes, let's do performance-based funding, but let's make sure that whatever Cindy's mission is, is appropriate for, I mean, y'all don't even know. The graduation rate in this institution is but, I mean, it, it blows everyone else out of the water. I mean, there are things that this institution does well, and they should be rewarded for doing those things well. So, yes, there's talk about consolidation. There's talk about consolidation of, of K-12 districts. Um, yeah. You know, up in Española, they wanted to change, uh, close Velarde Elementary. And is, man, I'm, I'm big... not so much concerned about consolidating teacher and school ones, administrative consolidation. Okay. Yeah. And they say we have what 90 school districts. Well, and we have multiple, 89. We have, we have administrative expense. Okay, and not only do we have 89 school high. districts, but we have 100 charters too. Right. And they all have administrations too. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. I'd have to, I would like to see the impact. I want to see the impact. I, I appreciate my superintendent in my teeny tiny little school district in Pawaukee. So um, I, I don't know. I, I'd like to see the impact of what that would do. I, I, I hear you that it's, a, that it's a, a dollar saver. Dollar savers, we need to make 
sure. Well, I'm not so sure that in in primary education it works as effectively as the university area. But definitely, people they have be been coordinating. Yeah, people want to shut way down our fewer boards of regents. I, I I'm <laughs> <laughs> and way fewer administrators than the high school. At fewer the boards of regents. Level. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to speak for the boards of regents. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> That is that there is exactly the problem. <laughs> we, we use schools as we use higher education schools as economic development tools mm -hmm. for the location, not as educational institutions. Well, they could be both. They could be both. They, they could be both. We have largely the problem with them not. Yeah, our primary. I mean, her primary mission is to educate kids, yeah. educate students. Yeah. You're right, folks. I'm so sorry. I have committee. So I have to go. Um, it's been a pleasure to chat with you. I just want to leave you with uh, reminding you that Santa Fe is not far away from us here, which is great. Think about if you live in Bob's or Raton or Silver City or Lordsburg. You have access to me, but also all of the members there. So please focus on you know whatever it is that you're passionate about. It's easy to follow bills on nmlegis.gov. Um, we're going to try to hopefully modernize a little bit with the committee hearings. We'd like to like tweet out, um, you know, committee agendas and things like that, so that you can make sure you know what's on the docket before you head all the way down there. But really, it's not all the way down there. Imagine coming up from Cruces for a committee hearing that gets canceled, right? <laughs> so thank you all very much. Please come visit me. My door is open and. chamber commercials. The next chamber business breakfast will be uh, County Manager Harry Burgess presenting the um, state of the county, um, the annual county report in January, on January 12th. And then in February, um, Senior County Planner Tamara Bear <coughs> will be talking to us about a Supreme Court decision that came out of a little town in Arizona that affected sign codes across the entire nation. And it's undoing everything that the Chamber has worked for for the last year on sign codes. Um, but it's going to cause a rewrite of the entire county sign code as well as everybody else's sign codes as well. So it's not just us. But um, that one will be February 15th. Um, business After Hours in January is going to be at the Historical Museum. Heather, when? January? I thought it was going to be February. February? It's going to be in January. That's fine. We're good. You let me know when. Okay. <laughs> so. Um, <coughs> Coffee and Connections is December 27th at Ruby K's, 10 a.m. I love it when someone says hot cool. Okay, Joni and Phil, come back. We'll be right back. <laughs> Next up on the agenda, we're going to be talking about the education bond issues. Yes, Kurt, that's your cue. Gillian, David. It's the center coffee pot, the silver one. That's the only one that's left. Um, where does this Okay, okay. Um, Kurt's up for a couple of minutes, uh, followed by Cindy Rooney. And when um, Kurt and Cindy are done, then Laura is going to be talking about the CIC internship program, which is fabulous. Um, the chamber had a CIC intern, and she did such a good job for Small Business Saturday that she became our membership coordinator. So with that, Kurt, take it away. Okay, um, let's see, hold on to your chairs. I got seven points, and they're all follow-ups from what we just talked about. So let me just go through this. I, and it's gonna touch every question that we heard. So first point, um, school board 
has um, a brand new set of strategic focus areas. The number one focus area is something different and unique across this country. It's student well-being. They put money behind it. They have, a, we've hired a brand new director of mental and physical health. Her name's Christine Koblen. She's been on, on board for three weeks now. And last night at the school board meeting, we heard from mental health professionals here in Los Alamos that said things have changed. Things are getting better with how our kids feel about themselves. And um, so we're really happy about that. That's point number one. Point number two, Department of Health and the CDC worked with us, and we have really good data about uh, student well-being in Los Alamos County area for the first time. And um, we're going to schedule two community meetings, one at White Rock and one in here, to, to go over that data. We didn't have that data very well. Um, budget cuts. Uh, last night, school board meeting, we cut $700,000 out of the Los Alamos school budget. And by the time this fiscal year ends, which is June 30th, we will have cut about a million and a half dollars out of our budget. That's this fiscal year. Next year, um, nobody knows my crystal ball is broken, but uh, we'll probably lose about another three to five percent out of our public school budget. So Why things are tough because oil and gas prices are low, and so the state of New Mexico is spending about five percent more right now than they're bringing in. So they're in the hole. Um, next point, um, this legislative session, we are working with uh, uh, Representative Garcia Richard and several others on, on a teacher evaluation bill where we design our own teacher evaluation system. And um, I'm really excited about that. We did go to the secretary because she has the power to, to waive that. And, um, and so we're trying to work with her on that. Um, next thing, on uh, getting a job right out of high school. We had this incredible partnership with UNMLA. You guys need to know about it. We had a graduation right here yesterday. And this is a, a program that allows a kid to graduate from high school with a certificate and a high school diploma right then and there, their senior year, and they go to work. And right now there's three curriculum areas. One of them is, um, is a technical program that would be a job at the lab. Another one has to do with marketing and web pages and that kind of stuff. And the third one has to do with EMT. And then uh, last weekend, I talked to a colleague at the lab, and we're going to have a fourth one, which is around, again, another technical, a need for technical staff at the laboratory. Um, the last two points I've got, um, if you're a business person, uh, I've, got, I've got something for you. <laughs> Is that like a sales pitch or what? <laughs> um, we, we have a campaign going on right now. The only way to raise money for schools locally is with a bond. Mm -hmm. And uh, the bond for schools is bricks and mortar. The bond for higher ed, you're going to hear, is for operational. So the only way we can raise money is bricks and mortar. And so we've got a campaign going for a vote that's going to start on January 3rd. And um, for businesses, that will put this sign in their window, we're taking your picture, and then we're gonna buy a full page out of the newspaper that says, support our businesses that support our local schools, and then we're gonna put everybody's picture in there with uh, the bond sign. So, does that sound like a cool idea? You also what? had somebody, I'm just gonna say this, made a great video the other day. Uh, whatever got posted on Facebook, I, I don't know who did that, but that was Disney really Pam, nice. I believe. Okay, so let me tell you about that. We that's the second offer. If we get your picture and you approve, we'll put you in a video. And um, if you count up the three videos we posted, we have over twelve thousand views in Los Alamos of those videos. So the word's really getting out on those Facebook videos. And you said you liked it. Thank you. It was good. Yeah. It was great. Um, Pam Miller's one of them that's been doing that. And if you are uh, a private person and you want to know what the bond money is for, it's for all our schools. Um, and the biggest amount of money is to remodel Bronco Mesa Elementary School. Um, but um, uh, right behind you, we're going to take those home stands and take them apart. We're going to build a place that's safe for protocols for concussions in a football game and uh, a way to get out of the lightning and build locker rooms and concession stand and then put the stands right on top of it. That's another part of what the bond will pay for. It'll pay for getting rid of the ice skating rink at Mountain Elementary and that ice skating rink isn't like what the county does. Uh, 
Um, the, another project that you'll see, uh, speaking of the county, is the, for those of you that are women, the bathrooms at Dwayne Smith Auditorium are going to be completely redone. <laughs> And that's not part of this bond. That is county money. 1.3, 1.2 million dollars from the county is being invested in Dwayne Smith Auditorium because that auditorium is used about 65% of the town by the time by the community. And and then so my last, my seventh point is if you're an individual and you want to take um, a um, yard sign. You're welcome to take a yard sign with you with the bond. And with that, I'm going to stop. I think my two minutes are up. Where's the, <laughs> where's the police? And, and let me introduce my colleague and my partner in crime, uh, Dr. Cindy Rooney, who hails up here in L.A. So, I'm thankful that I'm not running against Kurt Steinhaus <laughs> because he has such wonderful ideas. And so we also are borrowing, and we have these signs for local businesses, and so if you want them. I had a stack yesterday with the Kiwanis Club. I'm down to one. I'm hopeful that about 9 o'clock, about 20 to 50 more will materialize, and if you didn't get one, we want to do the same thing. We also have some campaign uh, materials over here. Um, we, as you probably know, as a state organization, I cannot say, I can encourage you to vote. We have a PAC that's organizing the campaign. This is material published by the PAC. Their information, their website, their Facebook page, their email address, we actually have a phone too, uh, is all here. So anybody that's interested there. I just want to continue the conversation though that we had with Representative Garcia. We have a unique mission. We are a unique branch campus. In our branch campus, the majority of our graduates are transfer students. If you are talking about a lower cost way of getting a higher education, you start at a community college and then you transfer. We are serving more students from the local high school than we ever had. Decisions are being made that they want to come over here, do the first two years, and then go. I know one family who said to their child, here's the money that we've set aside for your college. The student made the decision, wow, if that's what I have and I want a graduate degree, I'm going to start at UNMLA because that's an efficient use of my funds. Um, we also serve as Pathways for Careers. Uh, Representative Garcia mentioned the SunPath grant. SunPath grant is a Department of Labor grant. It was a three-year grant. It's helping us with our EMS programs. Many of you know this semester we started a personal care attendant program, and we're also going to be starting a certified nursing assistant program in the spring semester. That money is, those programs are possible because of additional funds from the SunPath grant. I'm not going to go through all the slides, but by the way, Representative Garcia is such a strong advocate of ours. She's a strong advocate of education and higher education and of UN and Los Alamos because she knows all of these statistics as well as I do. Um, if you look at all of the branch campuses in, in UNM, we're kind of like the Los Alamos public schools. We're up here. All the branch campuses in the state, we're up here. We have unique faculty, we have talented faculty and all of those things that I love about education. But there's two slides I want you to see. Kurt and I have been doing these slideshows around town. High, public education gets about 90% of their funding from the state, operational. We used to get 54% of our funding operational from the state. That, allowed, that was the state saying, we think education is good. We're funding it. But as state revenues have decreased, <coughs> the funding has gone down. The budget for this year, before the, before the cuts, before the special session cuts, before the next cuts, was down to 33%. And so how do we make up that money? Well, part of it is through these grants. And so we mentioned um, the grants of the purple, not 12% to 19%. That's the SunPath grant. We submitted three more <coughs> NSF grants this fall. We are doing the, it's almost like the economic development. We're going out there and trying to get the money, okay? But grants are always a specified purpose, and then when they go away, you say, how are we going to sustain these things? How are we going to continue to pay our instructors? How are we going to continue to recruit the students? In the state, tuition has increased, our, our percentage of tuition, let's say our percentage has gone from 12% of our revenues from tuition to 23%. That's two things. One is tuition's up. We are one of the few schools in this, few campuses that's growing. 
We are up to 1,050 students on campus this semester, up 9% over last fall, which was 10% over the previous fall. So every semester we're growing, which is wonderful, except tuition, even though people say, well, I paid my tuition, tuition is only a small fraction of the operating cost of an institution. So tuition is increasing. It's also going up by rate. We've increased it on average about 6% every year. Um, by the way, the third bullet, we don't get any funding to UNM Albuquerque. If I was the Department of Engineering in Albuquerque, UNM Albuquerque would get money and they would say how much engineering gets. But I am a separate branch campus, and branch campuses are separately funded. Okay, that's kind of a misnomer. One last slide that I will mention to you. If you look at state funding per student credit hour, 